Hello everybody, welcome back. Today is the meta update for TI after two days of the group stage. So right here, we are staring at the tier list we corrected, edited, and such from last week. So if you guys want to make sure you're staying up to date on exactly what heroes you should expect to see at TI moving forward, this is hopefully going to be your point of reference. So let's go ahead and get started. This one is basically from Last Chance Qualifiers. So we're just going to be looking at the most common picks and bans throughout the group stage thus far, including win rates, and we're going to adjust accordingly. So let's go ahead and get started, my friends. Banana Slam Jam. So first off, Marcy still sitting on top of the list. Highest pick bans, but the win percentage only 47. But the fact that she's getting first pick, first ban every game and is approximately 50%, we're still going to leave her right there. She looks nice and comfortable right there in the number one spot. Next up, we have Enigma. You know, I think Enigma has probably earned his slot as the second best hero in Dota uh, with a 56% win rate. So we will bump him above the Undying. Primal Beast, he has been picked or banned third most. Also, First rounded pretty much every game, 55%. So up until this point, it looks like we're still sipping some denial on Primal Beast, leaving him high A tier. We will escort him to his rightful place in third. I'm actually going to put him underneath Undying despite this because we're going to say like cautiously optimistic about Primal Beast, you know, so far looking pretty hot, but you never know. Undying will still leave you there. Morphling, still the most picked and banned carry by far. He's also getting flexed to mid. Only a 40% win rate. I do think the hero's getting, we're in like the second stage of the Morphling meta. It was like Morphling, holy shit, this hero's really good. Now people are figuring out how to count it and now it comes down to whether or not people can figure out how to draft around the counters a bit better to incorporate morphling so i'm still gonna leave him in s tier being the most contested carry in all of dota right now so next up we got sf a lot of people who have not been watching much dota are definitely surprised about this one the biggest thing about sf is the raise slow when you get stacks on raises i mean i'm just straight up seeing like random solo kills in the mid lane uh, we're seeing safe lane SF, similar to Morphling. I mean, he's pretty much in the same spot, but he's way more about his lane domination rather than like with Morphling, the Ags and all that kind of stuff. We're officially escorting SF to S tier. I'd say even above Morphling with this win rate, 62% win rate. He's getting early picked. These are not like perfect SF games where they're last picking SF. He's getting first rounded, so. Next is Pangolier. Now we've had this hero decently rated, but we did not rate him nearly high enough to be sixth most picked and banned with above a 50% win rate. I personally believe what's happening here is we're seeing a ton of, look at, look at the heroes at the top, right? Most of them can't deal with Rolling Thunder very well. There's not very many ways to do damage through Rolling Thunder. The only ranged right clickers are Morphling and SF, and they're actually pretty vulnerable to getting, like, chain stunned as well. Uh, he tends to struggle more against, like, the Drow's types, you know, the ones that sit way in the back right clicking, not these, like man up mode high damage output right clickers like this that get stunned so pangolier seems like he's in the boat of like being good against what's good right now um uh, mainly getting played mid we'll definitely bump him to the top of a tier i'm not gonna go any higher just yet just to be a little bit conservative but we had him mid a tier so it's not like he was way off bat rider we still had him s tier i am officially gonna drop bat rider out of s tier uh i have felt something similar in my pubs when I'm playing, uh, I feel like this hero is only annoying in pubs if he's 10th picked, where it's like a god tier Batrider game. You can't really kill him when he's like split pushing on the map with Firefly. You can't remove Sticky and he just like solo kills people all throughout the game. Um, and it seems to be kind of boating that with the indications of the win rate and the bans. Because usually when a hero's banned more than it's picked, it means it's scary for it to come out later on in the draft, but people don't necessarily feel comfortable picking it super early. We're still leaving Undying at, uh, at S tier, and the reason why we're leaving Undying at S tier, despite being like 8th most contested, is people are straight up first picking Clockwork. Uh, we have Clockwork right here. People are first picking Clockwork and the like because of Undying. Uh, so what's happening is... Undying has dropped in priority a bit for teams. They want it, they're looking to ban like Marcy, Enigma more so in the first phase. We've even seen like occasional Morphling 
first phase bands because usually Morphling gets picked fourth overall. It's like the team that has second pick in the second in the first round, they pick Morphling and then ban protect it. So if you're gonna ban Morphling and you don't want the enemy team to pick him there, you have to ban him first round. So what's basically happening is people are ignoring Undying more in the first phase bands, but then their first pick is always an Undying block pick. Specifically Clockwork, we're seeing a lot of SF. SF's one of the few side laners that could actually kill an Undying through all of those decay stacks because of the S, uh, the raised stack damage. Even though he's not the ultra highest contested pick, he is influencing every single draft. So we're leaving him right where he is. Uh, Visage. Definitely, I still think he's just one of the best off laners. Wraith Pact is just super broken. I think Visage is a budget enigma. The heroes offer very similar things to the game. They both buy Wraith Pact. They both offer like early tower pressure. Just one of them has a black hole, basically. So Visage, I think he's perfectly fine where he is right now on our tier list. Tiny, 30 picks with a 73% win rate. We definitely need to put Tiny way higher. So this is the first hero that we are like way off, definitely sleeping on. We'll put him like up here. I mean, 73% win rate, that's insanely high. Leshrac, a hero that's been coming, becoming more and more and more popular. I feel like the games that I see Leshrac lose is when the carry, or sometimes when the Leshrac is the carry, that the other core is a spread damage core. I've been seeing a lot of it. I feel like it's a common, I guess like oversight by teams that are picking Leshrac. Leshrac scales by buying a Bloodstone and just running in and doing AoE damage. So like for instance, Liquid earlier picked Leshrac Bristle. Like I think these two heroes do basically the same thing in the game. And a lot of teams that are doing that, like we saw Leshrac Medusa once, we like just these type of heroes that do spread damage, they're just countered by burst. Like you just kill them faster than they kill like people around them. So I think Leshrac's actually getting misdrafted a little bit. Um, and he's even better than this looks. So we are definitely off on Leshrac on this. I do think the Leshrac development has been relatively recent. Just to give myself a little copium there. But we had him like top of B tier, but he's definitely one of the most defining heroes of the meta right now. Like he's definitely been in a lot of drafts. So we'll put him at the top middle of A tier for sure. Broodmother, been picked a lot by EG. People have, I mean, it's like a mediocre win rate, but I also saw it like Entity and EG first rounded Brood. So we're definitely going to have to escort Brood to A tier from middle of B tier. I thought she was going to be like a second round pick. I thought she was going to be like a eighth, ninth pick that was like, Gotcha. Um, but people are straight up picking her first round against the likes of Undying. Um, she's considered pretty good against Morph. Uh, just heroes that can't really deal with the spiders, right? Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely bump her up. Clockwork. I don't really feel like I need to change him at all. He's literally picked as a deny picked Undying, and that's pretty much where he belongs. I could argue he's almost down here because he's preventing people from picking Undying, but then it's losing, right? So what happens is they pick Clock. I'm pretty sure if you add up these games with the Undying games, it's almost... 100, you know, almost 100% of games. It's probably a little bit higher just because sometimes they got picked in the same game. People are picking Clockwork and then the other team's just not picking Undying. He's also good against Primal Beast. People are also picking it because it's really good against Primal Beast. So Clockwork, I, I think the hero itself is good enough to be picked, but he's not actually anything special. He's just good against three or four of the best heroes. Beastmaster, uh, we're looking at pretty similar spot. No need to change him. Silencer. Uh, doing a lot better in the main event than he was in the group stage. He wasn't in the last chance. He was—he did not have a high win rate. We had bumped him up. So he was like D tier like a month ago or like three month, three weeks ago when we did the patch notes. And we had bumped him all the way up to middle B. But we're definitely going to have to give him the honor of like going up into like this area. Ember, highly contested, but not the best win rate. We have him top of B. I mean, we can put him like up here, you know, nothing too fancy, but uh, I don't think he's A tier yet. Drow Ranger, a lot of bans. She's pretty much getting second round banned on most games. Uh, she's very good against Morphling. She's pretty good against SF. She just feels powerful right now. It's really hard to lane if she's like, she's also good with all these melee fives we had drought here i mean she's getting highly contested so we probably have to put her like up here you know that seems better is she better than bat maybe we'll leave that one up to future reference sniper heckin love sniper bat chest sadly he only has a 33 percent win rate seems like from every sniper game i've watched they're winning early to mid game because this hero has a really strong early game and then they die once or twice and then they fall off we have him in like upper C. I mean, I love Sniper. I just thought he was bad against the meta. Um, he's definitely a late situational pick because he's bad against a lot of the meta heroes. We're gonna put him top of B, maybe like behind Ember Spirit because he's definitely getting contested enough to be considered a meta hero at this point. Faceless Void, getting less and less credit. 
Um, so he's like sitting on the same stats as Sniper, but I think Sniper's kind of getting, what do you want to call it? He's getting like experimented with. People are like, we know this hero kind of fits in the meta. Where do we put him? But I feel like Phases Void is just continuously dropping. So I'm going to put Phases Void like here. Naga! This is the hero I've been spamming so much in pubs. I have spammed so much Naga recently. I've played like 15 games of Naga this patch. And this makes me really happy to see, just because, like, it felt really strong in my games. Really high win rate, decent ban rate at this point. Um, I think Naga is even part of the reason that Faces Void is largely ignored. Horrible matchup for Faces Void. And having a hero, even just having, like, one or two heroes, like Drow and Naga, who Void is hard to play into, Broodmother as well. I think this is largely why Void's dropping off. I'd say it's mainly these three heroes that we're talking about. Beastmaster is also nice versus Void, too. So the fact that we're seeing so many of these top-tier heroes be good against Void is making him fall off. So Naga's stock went way up. Let's raise her. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this isn't necessarily indicated. I know it's a high win rate, but I think we're going to see more and more Naga. I think she's going to always be a ninth, 10th pick, maybe at the earliest 8th. But when it's a good Naga game, she's good against Marcy. She's good against SF. I think she's honestly decent against Morphling. It's not enjoyable to get Ags into when he takes your illusions, but I think she's good against pretty much all these summons offlaners, Brood, Visage, Beastmaster. So big fan here. I've been enjoying her a lot in my games. Snapfire. Dude, how is Snapfire just always picked a TI? I feel like she's always picked a TI and she always has this win rate. We have to give her more credit, obviously. We didn't have her very high because I can't even find her. Okay, we had her top middle of B. Guess we'll put her like right, right here. Eh, we didn't have to move her very much. That seems reasonable. We got Nyx. Nyx is a hero that I was like, I felt super powerful in pubs. It's actually the number one win rate in pubs versus Morphling out of every hero in Dota. So I would say I was cautiously optimistic. I thought he was like the fourth or fifth best four. Like that's where I thought Nyx rested. I think he's gone up. You know, I think he's like the third best four. That's a really high win rate. It definitely just seems really good against Leshrac Morphling specifically. Uh, also very good against Bat, but we're seeing less and less of Bat. So Pudge, I think he belongs right where he is. Ah, you know what? We see Pudge with... 73% win rate in 15 games. That seems higher. That's like up here, dude. Pudge is... This is Pudge carry, guys. Some of it's Pudge mid, but this is Pudge carry. I mean, this is just... Dude, this is one of those things. We were talking about it earlier on my stream. It's like, if you're just coming back to watch TI, you haven't been watching Dota all year, you're just like, what am I seeing on my screen? Why is there a Pudge carry in these games? And I definitely think he's going to continue to get picked. As long as summons heroes are meta, as long as mid laners like SF are meta, Pudge will always have a place. Pudge's main weakness as a carry is that he doesn't take objectives and he obviously doesn't do physical damage. So having somebody else on your team that does this is super important. So I think what really enables Pudge to be a part of this meta is the offlane hero pool and also the mid laners like Morph and SF. Puck and Mars are coming up next. Puck having a really high win rate. The Mars having a really low win rate. Looks like we have to give Puck more credit. I mean, definitely not C tier. Uh, probably up here somewhere. And then Mars, we had him pretty low as well, I believe. We had him bottom of C tier. I mean, he doesn't have a good win rate, so we'll put him at like middle to low B, I guess. Invoker, mediocre win rate. Same with Enchantress. So they're getting a lot of play, but not the best win rates. That to me is like middle of B. So we'll do like this. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Bloodseeker, yuck. A lot of bans, though. Oh, that's to protect Pango. I think Bloodseeker is, on average, a very bad hero. I have a middle of B. I'm even going to drop him to low B. I think the only reason people are are banning him is because of Pango. Low B, maybe even lower, because the only reason he, he's he's not getting picked. He's just getting banned uh, to protect Pango. Uh, Monkey King, man. Terrorblade actually getting pretty highly contested with a 50% win rate. That seems reasonable where he's at. Slark is definitely dropping off in value. Only 19 bands, seven picks with a three and four record. So we're going to drop him to like middle of B. Honestly, I think there's just too much ground damage right now. Leshrac, Pango, Primal Beast, Kunkka. I mean, we already put him bottom of B. That's fine. Lone Druid. He's good against Morph. I think his stock is going to keep rising. I'm going to put him like up here. 
I think we're going to see more and more Lone Druid. I think he's a hero that is picked for specific reasons, but it's going to become more and more common. TA. Honestly, I haven't seen any TA games. Like, all the games I've watched, I have not seen TA. Same with... Looks like Chen, TA, Ursa, all about the same tier. Similar win rates, similar picks and bans count. I still think Ursa belongs up here. TA will will move her up a little bit. We're actually gonna move Puck to like top of B. Chen. We have Chen like all the way up here. I guess we have to move him down a little bit because he's not getting nearly as contested as before. So we can just kind of lightning through this now that we're seeing these other picks. Anything that really stands out. 100% win rate on Viper! But we had Viper rated pretty highly um, for before this. So he's definitely not A tier if he's only getting picked or banned. 13 times, one pick. Um, so we'll put him like top of C. Definitely not getting picked as much as we thought he would. Tusk has only been touched 16 times. So we're going to have to definitely put him down here. Probably around Slark territory. Decent win rate. Not too many picks and bans. Dawnbreaker. I've been seeing a lot more Dawnbreaker. It's been happening even more today than yesterday. Um, also a 70% win rate. So I think we've been undervaluing Dawn a little bit. We have her right here. I guess she's honestly in the right spot. That seems reasonable. Maybe like a bit higher. 70% win rate. Maybe put Chen like over here. Queen of Pain, 0% win rate. Okay, that one's gotta that one's gotta take a little step down here. Zero and seven. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> life stealer. I think we gotta move him to like low to mid B. Getting a nice situational life stealer pick seems really strong in the current meta. CM has 19 games with a 73% win rate. She can get bumped up a little bit, though. She's not ever banned. CM's like one of those heroes that she doesn't... You don't feel like you're getting cheesed, you know? You don't ever feel like you're losing to the CM. She just does, like, a lot of little things correctly. Like, or, like, good for the team, you know? AoE slow, really strong in the laning phase. She's squishier than a melee creep. Just a lot of things that she does right in the game. Jakiro is 7-1. I think that's worth noting. Probably on CM tier if he's seven and one. Oh, I had him pretty decently high. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. We're not too far off on most of these. We had a few that we were way off. Arc Warden, kind of keep an eye on him. Any heroes down here that we rated pretty highly? No, all these are all these are our bottom tiers. Oh, we gave Bristleback B tier, and he's only been picked or banned once. So Bristleback, you gotta go down like here. I, I will be honest. I've been playing Bristleback in my pubs. And he was so good against summons offlaners. And what happens is you win your lane against the summons offlaner, like Enigma, Lycan, Visage, and then you get killed by a shadow, a silver edge shadow fiend. I actually think Bristleback's really bad against shadow fiend. Minus armor, because Bristleback doesn't usually build armor until like fifth item. Silver edge buyer from long range. I, I think yeah, Bristleback is yeah. Where's Lena at? I don't remember seeing Lena. Six games. 16% win rate? Yikers. Okay, Lena's gonna get bumped down to, like, down here. Probably Lifestealer a little bit higher. Legion's also been losing her game, so we'll bump her down. Tier list doesn't have to be perfect, but if there's anything that ever stands out, we have to make sure we keep track. I think we're good. I think right now we're good. So, with that being said, I believe our tier list is officially up to date once again for TI-11 after the second day of the group stage. If you want more TI-based content from your boy BSJ, make sure you understand which heroes you're likely going to see in your games. Uh, I obviously will be updating it if there's anything that we're very wrong about. Oh, Brewmaster's actually been picked a decent amount. We'll put him like, put him like right here. Perfect! First try! Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the tier list. Keep you guys posted. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.